You ever seen a minivan do burnouts? What if I told you there was a supercharged, mid-engine, rear-wheel drive vehicle out there? Basically, all the DNA of a supercar, except it could haul the entire family, the dogs, and sleep basically like a tiny hotel room. Well, it exists, and this is it. My 1997 Toyota Previa supercharged. And look at it. Oh, yeah. Say hello to the greatest minivan ever made. Ever, ever, by far. For me, it's always been a toss-up between this, the Previa, and the GM vans of the 90s, the Pontiac Transport and the Oldsmobile, oh, what was it, the Silhouettes, those Dustbuster-shaped minivans. But when it comes to engineering combined with looks, the Previa wins hands down. I've been after one of these for years, years. It's so hard to find a nice, low-mileage, clean Previa anymore. And when I saw this 140,000-mile example for $2,400, I couldn't say no. I bought it immediately. And no, it's not the most desirable all-wheel drive version. It is rear-wheel drive, but that doesn't matter to me because it doesn't snow all that much in Kansas, and I wouldn't drive it in the snow. I have a Hummer and other things, but also rear-wheel drive can do burnouts, as you saw. This minifan is such a sight to behold. It is beautiful, and if you're a big Trekkie like me, a Star Trek fan, obviously, You'll think this van looks just like a Type 6 or Type 7 shuttlecraft, just like the one that Jean-Luc Picard would crash all the time just because of some anomaly. But this van itself is a pretty big anomaly too. Take a look. To pull off this perfect slope, this perfect egg shaped, there is not a whole lot going on up here. Certainly no engine, no transmission, nothing. They actually have a long snout that comes out off the crank to run the accessories up here but all you have is really the intake and fluid tanks as well as the battery. And there's even more supercar DNA with this van because it has a separate oil tank, just like a supercar with a dry sump engine, even though the engine isn't dry sump, but it has a giant oil tank. I think it takes eight, nine, 10 quarts in a minivan. So all the mechanical magic with this minivan happens behind the front wheels, underneath everything. It's, it's all underneath. This mechanical configuration does come with one potentially fatal flaw, though. Let's say you're in a big hurry and your wife just drove your Previa and you hop in and you frantically need to move the seat back and you hit the wrong lever. Well, what happens is this. Ejecto cedo, cuz. Ejecto cedo, cuz! So the reason it's like this is because you are literally sitting on the engine. You hear the supercharger and it is directly underneath you. And if you want to check the engine oil in the engine, you have to pull this flap back and open up this little hatch. And there's the engine in all of its glory. Look at that. So this drivetrain's directly underneath you. Engine, transmission, drive axle, rear axle. It's a solid rear axle. This is not just a mid-engine car, it is a middle-engine car. This has got to be the most weight-centered vehicle ever, and I imagine the center of gravity is super low because the engine is way down here. It's amazing. Just about every other minivan ever made, ever in existence, smashes the engine, the transmission, the driveline, everything up front, making it a really nose-heavy, unpleasant driving experience, but not this minivan. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. <laughs> Got the tire loose a little bit there, the one wheel peel, but it is not fast by any stretch of the imagination, even though it has supercar DNA, mid-engine, supercharged, wheel-wheel drive. It's only 160 horsepower, something like that, and 200 pound-feet of torque in a big, giant van, so it's not fast. But still, it drives a lot better than those nose-heavy, poorly engineered front-wheel drive minivans, although those front-wheel drive minivans do have that nice stow-and-go seating feature. As you can see, I put the middle seat back in, and it's not a total death trap if you accidentally retracted the seat because you would just fall into that if it was there. If you're using this as a painter and did that accidentally, 
Well, uh-oh. But let's get back on track with this Previa. It drives amazingly well for a minivan. Really, all Toyotas of the 90s and 80s drove this well. They're so comfortable. The tires, they're not super low-profile tires that make the ride really harsh. They're not tuned to be sporty. Why does a Camry need to be sporty? And they don't have stupid bucket seats. Instead, it's just thick, deep cushioning, and it feels so good. This thing rides so smoothly and nicely and quietly. It's great. The visibility in this Previa is also insanely good, like most minivans, but this Previa takes it to the next level. This windshield is massive, one of the biggest windshields I've ever seen in a car. And I mounted the camera sort of right in the middle of it, but I could mount it even lower. And even still, I'm so far away from you. And you can see, it's like a fishbowl. So all of you Lamborghini owners out there that complain about the lack of visibility in their supercar, they should consider trading it for a Toyota Previa. You get all this supercar DNA, and you get a really practical, nice driving vehicle. Tavares, if you want to trade your broken Gallardo or Mercy, I, I would think about it. Even though I really love this van, i consider it. Text me. Can you imagine having to take your kids to school in this thing, and they're super embarrassed, and you let them off at the curb, and they're super embarrassed to be seen in this minivan, and then you do a giant burnout as you leave the parking lot. They'd probably still be embarrassed, but I would feel really cool personally. Well, technically they're one wheel peels, but still, it's, it's a burnout. We're back in the driveway and I just wanted to show you how futuristic looking this minivan is. Even in the interior, they tried to make it look like Star Trek with this panel here. Gauges are also futuristic. All these switches. Now, the only damage to the interior was actually on this dash panel right here. And it had sticky residue on it from like a Buddha being glued to it or something. But I really didn't even need to put the stickers up here because right out of Star Trek, I feel like Jordy LaForge, if this shuttle broke down and he was in space and he needed to swap out a few of these isolinear data chips, he would pull this back. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this fuse setup. These fuses and relays are set up almost like it's decorative or like out of a movie. So hilarious. And then there's the OBD2 plug for engine diagnostics. Now it's hard to believe, but it gets even better when you go back here. These seats, I love them because they are comfortable, but I also love the material. I love this woven pattern that you don't get with new cars nowadays. Now, modern minivans with their stow-and-go seating, which is really handy, they fold into the floor, but you can't do that with a Previa because the engine and transmission is in the floor. You actually had to take this seat in and out of the vehicle. It was not easy to do. It's super heavy, but now that it's here, check this out. I can fold it straight back into this seat, and now I have HA's Lounge. This seat reclines way back. Look at this. This is like my Hyundai Equus with a reclining seat. I don't have a massager, but I have a legit Chase Lounge for two. It's like a day bed, and I can even recline all the way back. And now I have a bed. I have a bed. I can sleep back here. I can camp back here. And the curve of the back is kind of egg-shaped as well. So I'm looking up to the sky right now, but I'm completely closed in. It's amazing. So now you can understand why I bought this thing and why I am so excited to own a Previa. This thing was so worth the $2,400 I paid for it, except for one thing. It's also acting like a supercar in another way, and it's leaking some kind of fluid all over my driveway. But to quote another 90s legend like the Previa, Hakuna Matata. And on a personal note, this is the last video ever that I'll film at the original Hoovies garage. Saturday, I am moving over to the new garage where this Previa has come in very handy helping me with the move. It, it, it hauls a lot of stuff, but the mover's not very good. The garage there isn't finished yet. There's still a lot to do. The floors need to be coated and there needs to be lifts put in, sound deadening so I can film in there without a massive echo. But moving out of this house and actually living somewhere else on Saturday, which is kind of bittersweet. The new garage will be amazing, but a lot has happened here. A lot of hoopties have leaked their fluids onto this driveway. And now it's time to say goodbye. Goodbye.
It also reminds me to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart for watching for the past three years because without you, this Previa, this McLaren, the house move, none of this would be possible and I really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Really, thank you. My subject for this month's column is one I feel very close to. Recently, we've added a wonderful new member to our family. The all-new Toyota Previa. What a coincidence, so did I. Our sleek, eye-catching new minivan. The Toyota Previa goes beyond what a minivan can be. Yes. It strikes that perfect balance of cutting-edge style, excellent performance, and family utility. Yes. Okay, let's get to the part about the burnouts. It does burnouts too, lady. Yeah, burnouts. When sitting in the new Previa, I start to feel like, like, like an ace pilot. Oh, space. The final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Previa.